right, Jordy Journal's time. I'm here with, of course, the main men alongside me, Don Skur to my right. How will that look on the yeah. camera? Yep, yep, left, Jordan Cronin. Right, lads, let's not beat around the bush here. Another win, routine, uh, first gear stuff from Newcastle United. Um, this is what good teams do, isn't it, Don? It is. It's we'll go into the game expecting a win. We we'll predicted a comfortable win for Newcastle today. And that's what it was, really. I think the first 10 minutes, sloppy. Um, Burnley had a couple of half chances. Nick Pope made an excellent save early on, to be fair to him. And yeah, Newcastle weren't quite at the races, but then sort of against the run of play, Miguel Almiron scores a sort of trademark Miguel Almiron goal. Excellent tackle from Kieran Trippier. Yeah, wins the ball back. His fourth assist in two games um, in the Premier League. And then Miguel Almiron cuts onto his left, curls it top corner. And I think that Miguel Almiron is probably slightly underrated in the fact that you know what he's going to do. Everyone in the stadium knows what he's going to do and he still does it. And um, past two games, fair to say he's one of a number of players now sort of back to the best or near enough back to the best. Um, so yeah, and then after that, it was just easy for Newcastle. I didn't think it was the best performance by any means. Like you say, I don't think they got out of first gear. I don't think they had to get out of first gear. And um, it was just about finding that second goal, which eventually came in the closing stages of the game. Anthony Gordon fouled inside the penalty area. I didn't think it was a penalty initially. Replays, it was it was quite a clear penalty. And then Alexander Isak, who squandered a couple of chances, big chances in the first half, um, finally got his goal, his fifth goal of the season. And Newcastle pick up another three points, three wins in a row in the Premier League, five clean sheets in a row, all competitions. And it's, yeah, it's the reality of, of being a, a good team. You go into these games expecting to win, you do win. And to be honest, we sort of just feel like, yeah, this is par for the course, really. Um, the negatives really surrounding the sort of injury situation. I was going to say, what we'll do is we'll kind of split this up, use the first half of this video to maybe analyse the game a little bit in itself. But I think all you guys are probably thinking the same thing as what we are here, is that the big story from the day is essentially that injury situation. So before we do come on to that, Jordan, I want to ask you a little bit about who were the players that you probably thought stood out today? Uh, Nick Pope, starting goal, uh, two very very good saves obviously first half yeah. or first four minutes it was stopped uh, Newcastle from going one nil down which would have been would have been difficult to come back from that uh, and then of course in the, the second half of the game the game was won but I think he tipped ahead of over uh, that end there behind me um, so the right end this time I think so I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking at the end I can see the end but I, I, you got very disorientated in the San Siro <laughs> I think I have this time as well but uh, yeah Nick Pope Although it was had a quiet afternoon, did make two top class saves. Yeah, probably, I know. It's probably probably there. <laughs> there. As what happens when you come pit side team James Bob. Um, yeah, so Nick Pope, two two important saves. Kieran Trippi, I thought was outstanding again today yeah. down that right hand side. Uh, an angry man today, wasn't he, Liam? Kieran he was. Trippier. He set the tone. I think he set the tone when Newcastle weren't playing well for that first twenty minutes or twenty five minutes, however long it may have been. Um, he really set the tone with his sort of tenacious tackling like he got stuck in a bit and a few of the verbals to a few of the Burnley players and just not the very out of character in some ways he's normally Newcastle United's Mr Nice um, calming everything down but there was a little bit of needle there and a little bit of grit against his former club I loved it mate that's exactly what I think you like to see from players but sorry Jordan I'll let you carry yeah, on yeah yeah I'm keeping trip yeah and then I thought Bruno was back I say the last few games has been back with his best but Consistently, he's put a consistent run together now where he has looked quite at his best. Um, three really good performances today, uh, linked up for the attack really well, um, co caused problems in and around the box, just dictated the midfield. And uh, yeah, it, it, it's the Bruno we all, we've all grew to love. He had, a, he had a difficult start of the season, came under perhaps some harsh criticism, but probably fair criticism at the same time because he wasn't he wasn't his best not just because of the high standards that he set but certainly over the last three games we've seen, we've seen the best Bruno we know uh, and it's a good time as well ahead of obviously the Champions League uh, running so no it was the performance as a whole it wasn't it wasn't a great game to watch um, don't particularly feel him too positive having watched it throughout it uh, it was I say it was wasn't a great game but Newcastle got the job done and that's all that matters 
Um, it was controlled, really. If you're, if you're, I mean, there's the amount of times Newcastle United have been in the position that Burnley were today, where you go to places and you, you know, you have the odd flash of, but you start quite well and you get an opportunity and you don't take it and then you barely see the ball again for the next 70 minutes. And, it, and Newcastle have been in our position so many times, and it's really nice that the boots now on the other foot that we are coming out of these games with a bit of a shrug your shoulders, another win under your belt, climbing the table, more confidence, another clean sheet. You know, it wasn't a, it wasn't a vintage performance. You know, there was a lot of sixes and sevens out there. There weren't many eights, but it, they got the job done, and, and that's that's all that matters. Particularly with probably the it feels like probably the largest game, the most significant game Newcastle have had in quite a long time, bar and cup finals, I would say coming up um, against PSG. So that maybe brings me on to the the big story of the day and. I'll start off on this one. Injuries. Not not a great situation heading into that game. It pretty much looks like, well, we're, we're almost certain that Sven Botman won't play. He's certain that Prof. I mean, we've got to be. Uh, tell us if I'm wrong. Joel Linton's not going to play. Haven't done his hamstring, is he? And Callum Wilson doesn't sound like he's close. The way that uh, Eddie Howe's talking, it sounds like he could miss. There's a chance he could be back before. Uh, the international break, but he didn't think Botman and Joel Linton would. Big blow is that, big blow. It was with Anthony Gordon getting a, a, his fifth yellow card today, which we must also mention, shows he won't play against, so he won't play against West Ham uh, next weekend. Uh, Joel Linton coming back into the side kind of filled that gap quite nicely with the injury to Harvey Barnes, of course. Um, but yeah, it's, it's left a big hole in the side and they look almost down to the bare bones in that department now. With of course Joe Willock who's had, just feels like a never ending injury. Um, one after the other that he's had for this five or six months or so that he's been out. Um, and, and a lot of what Joe Linton and Joe Willock in particular do is they give energy and legs to the team. And and that's one of the things that, that almost made Newcastle stand out last season. Um, they kicked on after the cup final, in my opinion, largely because of the likes of Isak and, and Willock coming into form and really performing um, like we know they can and we need that again. I want to make a little note of that as well. Um, I'm happy to take criticism from fans out there with regards to the performance today, but Alexander Isak, I think it hasn't really played very well this season at all and remarkably finds himself on five goals. Just doing the things that goal scorers do and scoring goals even though he probably isn't playing anywhere near his best. Um, but we need him at his best, we need Bruno at his best. Anthony Gordon, who will be able to play on Wednesday, as, as long as he doesn't get injury, at his best. And we need Man City-esque performances from the likes of Jamal Lascelles, who there is something quite uh, satisfying about Jamal Lascelles getting an opportunity for me to play in the Champions League, um, given that he was one of the only people who really stood up for this football club in its hour of need um, in that relegation season. It's just a little nice sort of sweet symmetry about the fact that he's going to get the lead Newcastle United out probably um, on their first Champions League night in 20 odd years. There's something quite rewarding about that and I hope he does take that opportunity. I want to quickly mention the Geordie backbone as well. When we're coming on to missing Joe Linton and missing Joe Willock, the Geordie backbone gives Bruno Bruno's the opportunity and his licence to perform the way that he did today and that's the tenacity, the running, the chasing, um, the energy that uh, Elliot Anderson, Sean Longstaff give him. Um, and I think we're going to need all that again. But lads, the injuries, Botman, Wilson, and now Joe Linton, big blow on. Yeah, massive. I mean, Callum Wilson, we were sort of talking just before the video, actually hasn't as injury prone as he has been historically. This is his first sort of injury spell he's had all, all year. He was ill at the start of the year, but pretty much since all of since the World Cup basically hasn't had an injury so yeah Eddie Howe described it as very minor um, a hamstring injury um, late fitness test me and Jordan spoke about it yesterday he was, he was training away from the squad on Friday and yeah doubt doubt he'll be available for PSG but Eddie Howe said he may be in with a chance of the West Ham game next weekend and Joe Linton Eddie Howe didn't say anything explicitly other than it would be a huge blow if um, he's out for any any significant period, which Liam's touched on would be, because uh, it was a frustrating 
um, manner in which it unfolded. He comes on, substitution, sh substitution. Four minutes later, he's, he's down injured under no contact. So yeah, you do feel the worst when um, those type of injuries happen. And after him just returning um, from injury on Wednesday night, that is that is a big blow for Newcastle in particular. And then combine that with Anthony Gordon's suspension, which Eddie Howe described as needless. So sensing a bit of frustration, um, Anthony Gordon's five yellow cards in, in seven Premier League games, as good as he has been for Newcastle. And part of his game is his sort of, um, that sort of swagger, that attitude he has, um, that can get him booked, but it's just too many. And that's some, a side of his game he just needs to manage a bit better, I feel. Yeah, definitely. I think that's, so that's five bookings in seven, seven games yeah. in the Premier League. It's, it's too many. He's going to get, if he carries on at this rate, he's going to get quite a few bans this season. Um, it's something he really probably needs to cut out as excellent he, as he has been as a player, right? So Jordan, solve the solve the mystery and the conundrum for us. What what team does Eddie Howe play on Wednesday with that Joe Linton blow? And what does he go with? How does he solve the problem uh, in replacing Anthony Gordon on Sunday? So does he keep it the same on Wednesday? You, uh, look, you, look, at, you look at players in that midfield now, Joe Linton would be an obvious one to come in for Eddie Anderson because of his experience yeah. and, the, and the big strength that he gives you in midfield. Now you've the only backup option in the midfield now you can look at is Sandro Tonali and it, I, I can't believe I've described him as a backup option because Newcastle have just paid £52 million for him uh, and more for, for Sandro Tonali but he is still adapting to life uh, say in the Premier League obviously Champions League will be a European game he's used to play in that stage but in the games that we've seen from Sandro Tonali he needs he still needs time and is it would it be a harsh decision to drop Elliot Anderson and put Sandro Tonali in? I, I think I think it would be, um, but I think it just comes down to experience. So I think that's probably an, an option that Eddie Howe will be recalling Sandro Tonali. Obviously, got minutes again the day after that Joel and blow. Um, I thought I thought he did okay, helped settle uh, helped settle the midfield, and obviously Newcastle went on to set set a clean sheet and the win. Um, so yeah, we'll have to wait and see what selection call Howe makes there, and then wide area. I'd imagine it'll stay the same. Gordon obviously can, can play because he can't play. Well, will play because he can't play Saturday. Uh, Almiron scored a uh, great goal today. Showed his class. Did a Miggy? He did a Miggy. Did a Eddie Miggy. Howe loved it. Yes. Yeah, he did. You like your question on it, yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't think there's many decisions to make. I think the team probably picks itself. Um, Centre half, I think you will stick with Jamal Sells, but as a. You know, could you look to put Dan Byrne back into the left-hand side centre half and then bring a Matt Target or Lewis Hall in? I don't think that'll, I don't think that'll happen. Um, I think there's a reason why Eddie Howe resisted from doing that today. I think he probably looked at that Brighton performance and seen the way Dan Byrne performed at centre half um, and thought that I'd probably that I'd best not um, because he was he had, he had a tough uh, return to his uh, former club and obviously in the opening ten minutes today when he was falling down just behind us here. Um, yeah, it was, it was, uh, I think it was good that he wasn't in the in the centre <coughs> of defence. Um, so yeah, we don't I, want any of that, Dan. None of that on <laughs> on Wednesday night, please. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, in short, yeah, I, I think I think there's potential to keep the keep the team the, the same. Uh, but injuries, <laughs> you look at the left wing position now for for West Ham. They paid you know 80 million pound on two left wingers in, in from January to, to the summer, and they're now going to a game where they don't actually have a. A left wing out they paid for obviously yeah. Jacob Murphy. That's, that's probably the yes. only option they can put on the left hand side now for that West Ham game. So I was going to um, pose a little one there. The obvious thing is Jacob Murphy just comes in, and I think that's what he'll probably do. But does Elliot Anderson, is there a potential for Elliot Anderson to shift out onto the left yeah. and you bring Sandro Tonali in? Because that's yeah. that's probably a more natural position for Anderson. Although you can see that he's done he's done a year and or so of coaching with Eddie Howe into that number eight position because he's He's looking like a very much uh, very similar to Longstaff in many ways, the energy and the pressing, but with probably a little bit more technical uh, ability. Yeah. Doesn't get into the well, but gets into goal scoring positions as well. Um, should have scored today. Oh, he really should have. He's not going to get many. Look, he had a he had a harsh one choked off down at Nottingham Forest last season, but he'd be kicking himself tonight that he hasn't scored at the Leeds end. Uh, uh, perfect chance to to open the scoring for himself. But um, I'm sure the chances will come. If he keeps performing the way he is, the chances will come because he'll get lots and lots of games here. Um, right. 
Is that about time? Yeah, time I, think, I, think, I think we've probably all waffled enough. Oh, I've certainly I'm, waffled early on the video. Geordie waffle. Yeah, it's becoming the Geordie waffle. Isn't it? <laughs> keep, uh, keep supporting me. Keep commenting. We love to read them, even if it's criticism of Jordan. Um, <laughs> I'll definitely get I'll definitely get criticism for my uh, point of view around the video. Don't know what I was saying. Uh, we love it. Like, comment, share, subscribe. I've told you before. Press that little bell, and, and you'll get it straight to your, your device whenever we produce one of these videos. And maybe Champions League week and coming up an international break as well. Let us know the kind of content you'd like to see. One of our videos that did reasonably well was controversial opinions. Do you want more controversial opinions? Or... I don't want to give any more. <laughs> <laughs> or, or what other kind of content? What do you want to know from the Jory Journals? Let us know. So yeah, like, comment, share, subscribe, and we'll see you again when PSG are here under the lights at St. James's Park. <laughs>